This is the first part, which is known as the head of the pancreas. This is the second part, which is known as the neck of the pancreas. And this is the body of the pancreas. Then this is the tail of the pancreas. Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we'll be looking at the pancreas. We'll be looking at the pancreas. So this gland that I'm touching is the pancreas. So the pancreas is defined as an elongated. You can see it is very long. It is defined as an elongated accessory digestive gland that lies transversely and retropenetrally in the umbilical region. And the tail of the pancreas extends into the left hypochondriac region. So the pancreas is an accessory digestive gland that lies retropenetrally and also transversely in the umbilical region here and extends into the, the tail extends into the left hypochondriac region. So you can see the duodenum wrapping around the head of the pancreas. So this is the duodenum wrapping around the head of the pancreas. So this is the superior mesenteric vein. And this is the splenic vein here. So you can see the splenic vein drains into the superior mesenteric vein. Then this is the inferior mesenteric vein. And the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein. This is it, the inferior mesenteric vein. It drains into the splenic vein. And the splenic vein drains into the superior mesenteric vein. And the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein together at the neck of the, behind the neck of the pancreas forms the portal vein. So they form the portal vein here. And the portal vein enters the liver. The portal vein enters the liver. Then this is the splenic artery. This is the splenic artery. So the pancreas is an endocrine gland. It is also an exocrine gland. It is an endocrine gland and also an exocrine gland. What we mean by endocrine and exocrine is that the pancreas help in producing hormones. The islet cells at the tail of the pancreas helps in the production of hormones like insulin and the rest of them. Then it is also an exocrine gland because the pancreatic arsenide helps in the production of uh, digestive enzymes that help in digestion or pancreatic juice. We will be removing the pancreas so as to see the different parts of the pancreas. So, this is the pancreas. This is the pancreas. And this is the duodenum. So, you can see this part of the pancreas is lying on the C shaped of the duodenum. So the pancreas is an elongated accessory digestive gland that lies transversely and retroperitoneally at the level of L1 and L2 vertebrae. These are the pancreatic asini. Eh? These are the pancreatic asini that help us to be able to recognize the pancreas. So these are the pancreatic asini. These are the pancreas is J-shaped or retort shaped. So you can see it is J-shaped or retort shaped. So the pancreas is 15 to 20 cm in length. So you can see the length of the pancreas. It is 2.5 to 3 cm in breadth or wideness. It is 1.5 to 2 cm in the thickness. So, the pancreas weighs 90 gram. So, the weight of the pancreas is 90 gram. Then I've told us that the 
this part of the pancreas uh, finds its way or curves around the duodenum. So this is the duodenum. Then the pancreas is divided into four major parts or four main parts. This is the first part, which is known as the head of the pancreas. This is the second part, which is known as the neck of the pancreas. And this is the body of the pancreas. Then this is the tail of the pancreas. This part is the tail of the pancreas. So that is it. So the head of the pancreas, as you can see here, has an elongated part here. It has an elongated part here, which is known as the uncinate process. So the head elongates here. And this part is known as the uncinate process. So the head of the pancreas has three borders and the two surface. It has three borders and the two surface. So the borders are the superior border here. This is the superior border. Then the inferior border here. This is the inferior border. Then we have the right lateral border. So this is the right lateral border here. So the superior border is found under the first part of the duodenum. Then the inferior border is found eh, above the third part of the duodenum. This is the third part of the duodenum. While the right lateral border is found eh, close to the second part of the duodenum. So this is the second part of the duodenum. Then, having seen that, Let's look at the surface of the head of the pancreas. It has an anterior surface here. So this is the anterior surface of the pancreas. Then the posterior surface here. Anterior surface and posterior surface. Then having seen the head of the pancreas, let's go over to the neck of the pancreas. The neck of the pancreas here, this is the neck of the pancreas. It has two border and two surfaces. It has two border and two surface. It has the superior border. Eh? This is the superior border. On top here is the superior border. And this is the inferior border of the neck of the pancreas. Then the two surface is the anterior surface. And it has the posterior surface here. So that is it for the neck of the pancreas. So we have the body of the pancreas. This is the body of the pancreas. And the body of the pancreas extends from the neck to the tail. It extends from the neck here down to the tail of the pancreas. So the body of the pancreas has three borders and three surfaces. It has three borders and three surfaces. So it has the it has the anterior border. This is the anterior border of the body of the pancreas. It has the superior border. This is the superior border. And it has the inferior border. This is the inferior border. It has the anterior border here, it has the superior border here, and it has the inferior border here. Then, coming to the surfaces of the body of the pancreas, so it has the anterior surface here. This is the anterior surface. It has the inferior surface here. This is the inferior surface of the body of the pancreas and it has the posterior surface. So I repeat, it has the anterior surface here. This is the anterior surface. Then it has the inferior surface. This is the inferior surface. Then the posterior surface. Then there is an, an elongated part. Eh? 
on the body of the pancreas. This elongated part here, as you can see, this elongated part is known as the tuba omental. It is known as the tuba omental. Then coming to the tail of the pancreas, this is the tail of the pancreas. The tail of the pancreas contains numerous islet cells or islet of Langerhans. So that is it. And the tail of the pancreas has two surface and two border. It has the superior border here, the inferior border here. So it has the superior border, the inferior border, the anterior surface, and the posterior surface. The tail of the pancreas extends into the left hypochondriac region of the abdomen where it joins or where it is attached to the spleen through the dinorenal ligaments. So it joins the spleen through the dinorenal ligament. So the tail of the pancreas moves slightly upper than the rest of the part of the pancreas. So that is it. Then I've showed us the pancreatic arsenal. It is this pancreatic arsenal that helped us to recognize the pancreas. Eh? This uh, kind of divisions in the pancreas, you can see them. These, they are known as the pancreatic arsenal. So, within the pancreas, you see the pancreatic duct. Eh? You see the pancreatic duct. The pancreatic duct runs within the length of the pancreas eh? from the tail down to the uh, head here so it runs within the length of the pancreas and the uh, small dots there are small pancreatic dots that open into the major pancreatic duct so there are small pancreatic ducts that open from sideways eh? from left from right left right left right left and it open into the major pancreatic duct and the major pancreatic duct now runs along the length of the pancreas and that is inside then the major pancreatic duct now combine with the hepatic duct or the bile duct to form the hepatopancreatic duct to form the hepatopancreatic duct so as you can see here coming to the duodenum as you can see the first part of the duodenum is not here eh? is not here but this is the second part of the duodenum this is the second part of the duodenum this is the third part of the duodenum and this is the fourth part of the duodenum then if you open the duodenum this is the duodenum. You notice the presence of the circular folds in the duodenum. You see the circular folds in the duodenum. Eh? And this circular fold is known as the pleta circularis or the valve of Keckerings. So that is it. Towards here, you notice this nipple like protrusion. This nephrolytic protrusion, it is known as the major duodenal papilla. It is known as the major duodenal papilla, and the hepatopancreatic duct opens into it. Eh? The hepaticopancreatic ampulla opens into it. It also serves as a landmark. Eh? Above the level of this major duodenal papilla, above the level develops from the four gods. Why below the level of this develops from the mid gods? Another thing is that above here, this part of the duodenum above here is supplied by the superior pancreatic duodenal vessel. Why below this papilla, major duodenal papilla, is supplied by the inferior pancreatic duodenal vessel so that is it then the accessory pancreatic duct is formed around the head of the pancreas 
it is formed around the head of the pancreas here and it opens into the minor duodenal papilla. It opens into minor duodenal papilla in the duodenum. So the pancreas is supplied by the pancreatic branch of the splenic artery. So the splenic artery uh, runs superior to, to this uh, pancreas. So the pancreatic branch of the splenic artery supplies the pancreas. Also the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery also supply the pancreas. Then coming to the venous drainage, it is drained by the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric and portal vein. Remember that the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein join together at the back of the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein. So the venous range of the pancreas is that splenic vein, the superior mesenteric vein, and the portal vein. Then the nerve supply is through the vicus nerve. Then coming to the lymphatic drainage, the lymphatic drainage is through the superior mesenteric lymph node and also the celiac lymph node and as well the pancreatic or splenic lymph node. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends and comment on this video. Thank you very much.